you have done to Tosi and the AT3 Resources team. Um, I sent a message to Tosi. I said, Tosi, you, I need to explain to you why, um, in case you are wondering why I'm always cheering, is because I know firsthand that entrepreneurship is no walk in the park. It is, it is not easy, you know, at all. You know, and I shared with her um, a quick example of when I had, you know, dabbled into it. So I think it's congratulations. Five years. I think there's research that shows that after you have survived five years, you can go even the longer haul. So we also put up, can we please put our hands together for the team um, who have put this together? I also think, you know, that it is quite generous of them to think about how to give back whilst they're celebrating. Because a celebration is typically about you and you're, you know, thinking about how to improve yourself. But it's amazing that they're generous enough to want to give back, you know, to others. So I think my task here is very simple today. I've been asked to speak about, you know, why reputation matters for small and medium scale enterprises. But right before I go into it, my name is Inkiru Ulumide Ujo. I work as executive head for marketing and communications with Standard Bank in South Africa. I also run an agency, and a capacity building agency called the Lighthouse Network. So it's a true pleasure and honor to be here. I have put together a few slides, but I think more than the slides is I'm looking to have a conversation. I had Tosi, you know, mention if you, someone I know who's online. So hi, Dr. If you can hear, you can see me. Um, it's nice to see you eventually when I do see you. Um, but I think that the purpose of this is to have a conversation. And in case you're wondering, I also brought my notes back because I think that you never share knowledge without learning yourself. So um, I'd love also, you know, to take some feedback as, as I return. Look, I think in the course of my work, my work allows me to travel to about 16 African countries, and the one insight that I bring to you is the same challenge we're suffering or we're challenged by as a small medium enterprise. The same that people like the person who's an entrepreneur in Tanzania, in Mozambique, in Angola, that is the same type of challenge that they're going through. And what types of challenges are they going through? I think the first is access, you know. I mean, every entrepreneur is wondering, how can people access my goods? You know, how can people, how can I distribute my goods? What will I do to, to make sure that my goods or my services walk very quickly into the hands of the right target audience? The second thing is, how can I connect in the, in the cheapest way possible, in the most inexpensive way possible because you'll agree with me that the other things that you're dealing with if we ask to see there's probably regular OPEX, salaries, the other things. So you immediately don't or you usually don't have a big marketing and communications budget to be able to get this you know out. So I think whilst doing all of that, what is really important for us to realize is that your reputation matters. I think they're testing, Toyos is testing my grits to see how far I can go without my slide. <laughs> but your reputation matters. And um, we hear it often, I think it's Warren Buffett that says that it can take you hundreds of thousands of years to build the brand, but it will only take you one minute to, to pull the brand down. So I think the session today is for each one of us to understand why our reputation matters. The first thing I'd like to start with is that you never walk, so no, and I'm illustrated. So I wake up today, I arise, and then I tie my hands together. And I say, today I'll do nothing. You know, but I make a phone call to say, hey, and to say, how's it going? Um, and then when I drop the call, I call another friend of mine. The reason I'm illustrating is to say that you never walk so lightly that you don't leave a footprint. Never. Every one of us as a small business owner is leaving a footprint. And what types of footprints are we leaving? We're leaving footprints in the way that we engage people. We're leaving footprints in the way that we communicate. We're leaving footprints in the way that we sell to people. And therefore, it's really important you know, for us to be mindful of that footprint. Can we go to the next slide? I'd like to control the slide. Can you give me a lot more. Um, you give me a lot more control. Is it OK? Is anybody in front of you? 
Chinese, if you can, and maybe you scan it. No, it looks short, let's go. Don't worry, you do it. Is it? Okay, because I just want to be in control. And, and in any case, um, don't be worried about the slide, about all of this, but this is what we're talking about today. Some of which I've talked about, which is why is reputation important? How would you manage your reputation? Um, and I think we also want to talk about measurements because one of the things I found from having capacity building sessions for SMEs is that you think that measurement is meant only for the big brands. So when you think about measurement, you're thinking, I can't be my measuring, it's really not for me. It's for Coca Cola, it's for Unilever, it's for, you know, for the big brands. But measurement is so important because it is what gets measured that gets done. It is what gets measured that gets done. So measurement is really, really important. So I put through a slide that talks about you know, what this is about. Another slide that speaks to us about um, how to measure. Another slide that speaks to us about um, how we can go about ensuring that we have the right and you know, we build the right reputation that enables us to connect to our customers. Can I ask anyone who's online or anyone who's here, if you can tell me the type of business you run and who your target audience is. And I don't want to look at um, B, 74 key photography. Tell me who your business is. Yes, something interesting. Okay, does, does anyone, do you want to use a mic? Here. Let me see if I'm not sure. Uh, if, okay, uh, I'm Ozzy by name. Yes. I have an online store. We go by the name Edmund Fonts. Right. So I sell um, UK used wares and brand new wares. Right. Which I sell directly from UK. Right. So it's directly sourced. Um, right. The premium I pay. Right. And below that. Right. And, and who would you say your target audience is? Uh, so anyone that anyone and everyone that can afford the brand. First of all, the goal is affordability. Okay, okay. I think the only thing I'm going to leave with you is whilst I hear you on everyone and anyone, you need to pull in a bit more. And there is and at least feel free to say it. There is advantage in honing in. And the advantage in honing in is you are able to devise the right strategy to connect to the right database. And I don't want to go into tactics. You know, to start discussing how you find, you know, the segment of people um, that you need. And no, I don't want to do that. I want to go straight into. So, so great to hear what it is that you do. Is there anyone else who wants to talk about? It? Okay, is there anyone else who wants to talk about what they do before we go in here? Anyone? Anyone else? Anyone else? Because now we've lost a few minutes. I'm Nicola D. Yeah, I run an online boutique show. Oh right. It's a low boutique, so it's not a regular. Mm -hmm. uh, my target audience are people that they, they prefer quality to quantity. Mm -hmm. So if you're someone that you really prefer to have something that mm -hmm. will last longer and right. affordable. So, Excellent. So luxury online. I'm going to come back with a few questions, but thank you so much. So we're talking about um, um, what brand reputation is discussing online reputation management, and then asking ourselves why must we build a good reputation, talking about a few myths you know, that can undermine your potential. Um, I thought it was important to bring an example here, and I was looking for a few Nigerian examples. There's one I remember, we can talk about it when we get there, but this is an international example. Something I call the KLT factor, um, then we talk about customer loyalty, and then I'll provide you tips you know, um, so that we can become an always on interpreter. So let me go to the next slide, please. Um, right, so, so I think if I asked anyone here what the brand reputation is, what would you, what would you respond? What comes to your mind? Don't make the slides yes. What comes to your mind? Uh, how long, how long you've been, you know, negotiating with customer and how friendly you are, the customer relationship. Okay, good. So it's how your customers relate to you, that's what you're saying. Okay, my lady behind I simply say it's um, how people view the brand, when they hear the brand, the first thing that comes Correct, to correct. Them. And can we just flip, can we go to the cover page, because I need to do a quick exercise. Can we go to the cover page so we don't see this page? Um, can I just ask, and you know, I'm so used to black examples, but that's not all right. We must move away from, from the bands. But when we think about, um, 
the best washing detergent? What comes to your mind? <laughs> and you know people go to the stores and they say, I'd like to buy Omo. I find it so rude. When you think about the best seasoning cube, what will come? Or the most famous? And they go to the store to say, they want to buy Omo, but they go say, please, I want to buy it. What does it say? It says, it immediately, the reputation of, of, of that seasoning cube is so strong that people have positioned it as the leader in its path. So I know that I have a few details on the slide, but I want to say to you that your reputation, your brand reputation, is the sum total of the thoughts that come to mind when somebody thinks about you. The sum total of the thoughts that come to mind when somebody thinks about you. The sum total of the thoughts that come to mind, you know, views. If I think about, I mean, I remember I grew up in Potaco, so um, I could always tell, you see somebody went to uni then, I can tell already, you know, in my mind I'm thinking, this one has bad manners. If you say somebody went to uni live, you know, there's a perception that comes with that. But if you say someone went to Ife, what comes to your mind? And I hope there's no Ife here, because they're always so proud. So proud. Oh, God, they're so hectic, they're so proud. But let me do down to it. Can I go on to my next slide? Excellent, excellent. So, I mean, this is what I'm going to leave this with um, the team. Um, you know, it's how people perceive your brand. I've already given you, you know, the definition. It's shaped from people's experience. How do they experience your brand when they come in contact with you? Look, your brand reputation can change over time. And I say this to say, if you already aren't in a good place, don't worry. That's why you have a strategy and you have tactics about how to get out to the right place. So your brand reputation can change over time, which is why you must monitor you know, and manage it. And your brand activities shape opinions of existing and future customers and can make or map your brand. And we're giving those illustrations. Can we go to the next slide, please? Right. And, and I believe if we said that the sum total of what somebody thinks comes to mind when somebody thinks about you is what your brand is, then invariably, you know, um, it's important for us to understand that online reputation management is about building an online presence, which both of you, you know, already have. Can I just ask what platforms you are on? Okay. Okay, cool. So, and you? Okay, who else? What else are you on? Who else? Online. Who's, anybody taking anything from the online community? Are we able to interact with them? Okay. Right. Anyone able to, so that they can also participate, you know, in that. Can we go on to the next slide, please? On to the next slide very quickly. So there's a lot of power in your online reputation, real-time power in your online reputation. I remember years ago on a brand that I worked on, you know, we had um, something negative said about us, and our price, our price share actually fell. That's how strong, you know, your online reputation is. You might be sitting there and saying, I don't have them, I'm not listed on the stock exchange, so it doesn't matter. But the truth is, it can affect you, you know, in such a powerful manner that your share price tumbles, your share price falls. When there's a story about insider trading for any bank, you know, what financial institutions are selling is trust. So once there's a negative story around governance or something, if you're watching the markets, you will see that immediately, you know, um, their online reputation drops. So it takes about 40 positive consumer experiences to fix the damage of a single negative review. It takes about 40 pleasant experiences to fix the damage of one, one, just one negative um, review. It's 5% of customers trust online reviews as well as personal recommendations. You know, I told you earlier that part of my work, I travel to African countries, and my office is quite good on governance. Before they choose a hotel, they would have gone through, people would check, they would do the ratings, they would do the security. But I personally, it doesn't matter what they put for me, before I arrive in the town, as soon as I get off the flight or before, I'm checking what are the reviews for this hotel? What is happening? You find that rarely do people go to places or purchase goods and services without checking what the customer reviews are. 71% so um, of consumers have had a positive experience with a brand on social media are likely to recommend the brand to their family and friends. And 
If you think that we step back and think about how powerful word of mouth marketing is, it actually saves you a lot of marketing bucks because now someone has bought the luxury brand and I get up and I say I'm looking for a, a Vuitton bag and they're like, don't go anywhere, just come to him, you know, directly. So you are not, I'm not searching online to find where he is. Somebody who has experienced it firsthand is selling it, so I just go ahead, you know, and purchase it. 84% of all marketers agree that building consumer trust will become marketing's primary objective in the near future. I don't know what the near future is because the Edelman Trust Barometer that I saw during COVID and up till date says that trust is the biggest, biggest, biggest um, factor for which anyone will purchase a brand. So trust, that I can trust you. Can we go to the next page? That I can trust that you will do what you say and that I can trust that you can deliver on what you say. Um, I think one of the things I find still that intrigues me unendingly is how, you know, people don't care about, you know, the reputation of their brand. Now and again, I'll see someone post, um, you know, something that says, do you know this um, boutique? I paid X and X amount, they never deliver. And then you look know, right under you say, yes, they're scammers, yes, they did that to me, yes. Then they begin to trace, you know, to see who the purchasers are, you know, to find the digital footprint to be able to connect. And I'm thinking, you already have, you know, give and take 400k um, followers, and probably out of that, let's say you have 0.5% customers. Why are you damaging your reputation by not delivering, you know, and making a mess, you know, of what it is that you set out to build? And, you know, I'd like to say that it doesn't matter how pretty a brand is, the real power you know, in a brand, is how your consumers experience you. So you can have, what's the name of your business again, remind me? And I don't mean to always use as an example, but tell me. Clothes. Sorry? Lowe's clothing. clothing. So you can have Lowe's clothing, nice brand colors, nice livery, you know, everything looks really good. But when I call, the person who responds is rude, doesn't care about it. So the brand experience, the brand outlook might look good but the brand experience is poor. So a brand is not a strong brand until its reputation, its online reputation aligns to his experience. So until what he pitches that he is aligns with the customer experience, he doesn't have the right perception and he's not a strong brand. So why build a good reputation? We've talked about the highest thing that you're selling and I told you the Edelman Trust um, report that I saw from COVID, or that they put out from COVID, says that trust is the highest thing. I think COVID brought to fall that trust is the highest thing that, um, you know, that we're selling. And I think less impact of future crises. And I'll give you a quick illustration. I remember when I was working on a brand, and, you know, someone had said we did something wrong, and it was getting out of hand, it was regulator, share prices falling, you know? I used to have people who would call me and say, who said you did this thing? And I'll be like, well, that's what they said. And they'll be like, what, you? No, 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 not you. Your reputation is stellar. We know you to be blah, blah, blah. And, and what is that doing? It's, it's the impact of the crisis is less because, you know, my re online reputation is strong. My reputation is strong, you know, as a brand. When someone comes and says, what's going to be business? Elements of us. Elements of us. And, you know, they say, it's, it's such a mess. And, even if there's one loan for us, someone will say, but that's not my experience of that brand. My experience of that brand is blah, 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 blah. So I think another reason, and we've talked about it, when we talked about word of mouth, I'm not going to dwell on it, is that it's less expensive for an SME, and you know, it provides increased profit. Let me go to the next slide, please. We're going to fly so we can have a conversation. So there are a few myths, you know, that are the mining, building, and online reputation. You know, someone will say, no reputation is better than a bad one. And you remember the illustration I made when I talked about, you never walk so lightly that you don't touch anyone. So you can bind your hands and your legs, so as long as you talk. You know, as long as you, you, you just wake up in the morning and come out, you're already building your reputation. So why don't you be deliberate about what it is that you're building on online? So the myth is that no reputation is better than a bad one. That's not true. Lack of reviews can raise suspicions amongst potential customers. I've just told you that it doesn't matter the due diligence they do about a hotel. It doesn't matter what you do to do. As I'm stepping into the country, I'm reading the review prior, regardless of what the due process is. Um, online reputation cannot be controlled. That's not true. People say, oh, it's go viral. That's to be the death of the brand. I don't think so. It goes viral, but you are able to craft and manage 
you know, your messages in a way that at least recovers or rescues you from that crisis. You may not have total control, but you can alter it to an extent. Me, online reputation management um, is not worth the time and expense. I don't think anybody here this morning believes this, so let's not push that. Um, you, you should wait till you see you're in crisis to manage your reputation. That's not true. Prevention is better than cure. Can we just dwell on this last slide? As a small business, what do you think it is you will do to manage or prevent you know, yourself from getting into a crisis? What do you think you should do? A few basics. Okay, and when it's broken, what must you do? So I think when it's broken, it depends on the cost for a Sometimes you could deliver it to them and say, I complain that, um, oh, I don't like the points. And how must they complain? Okay, um, sorry. Uh, in some people's complaints now, some people might say, what I see online is not what I actually got. So, another thing with most online stores is they'll tell you no refunds, mm -hmm. which is, which is, um, uh, I'll it. It's a turn off. Even myself, it's a turn off. Mm -hmm. So, if you have complaints, I want an exchange for you. I don't want you complaining. I want us to have a seamless relationship, seamless business, let mm -hmm. everything go. Mm -hmm. Because to me, word of mouth is even very, very, very it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's stronger than uh, mm -hmm. the online ads that you just push. Right, thank you. But, but I think that the first thing before we get into your policies and your procedures is access. Access. I worked in the service industry, okay, I'm still in the service industry, but I worked in the aviation for, I don't know, between Virginia and Africa and Virginia Nigeria, quite a while. Um, and one of the things that used to shock me was how much customers would be at peace if you said to them that you understood. So the first thing you should have, no matter how little your business is, is access. Access. Is there, did you, you know people who put info, and I don't want to use eight resources because I'm sure they're not like that, but people who put info at eight T3 resources and they'll never touch the email. You know what I mean? Never go there. So someone is distraught, they're taking out their time to complain, but nobody's listening to it. And, and I tell you that once a customer feels hurt, he at least steps down and is managing his emotions until you provide you know, the right solution based on your on your policies. So I think is don't think that you're a yeah, small business. I don't have anybody to man info at a, a, a Lulu boutique or whatever. You need to provide access, you know. And I think people say, you buy something from someone and they'll say, oh, the service channel is not the sales channel. That's nonsense. Why, you, why do you sell to me through the channel but it's not the service channel? You should be a yeah, young business. You should enable your sales channel be the same one for which you take complaints out of. Can we go quickly on to the next slide? Okay, um, so this is the story of Lorna Wolf and it's an international brand. Um, I know that there are a few local brands who have faced online reputation issues um, and who have come out of it successfully. But these people were just a budget friendly interior designer somewhere in the States. They acted as a middleman between interior designers and their customers. I thought that they were brilliant, you know, in that thought and in that idea. So I don't know who the big ones are that we have, but they were the middle people ensuring that, I don't know who we have, that the small home designers had access to their market. They were great. I thought it was innovative as well, having started in 2014. Um, but by 2018, you know, they had one-star ratings, complaints of 40 items, undelivered orders, substandard service, omission reforms, and, you know, the publicity kept, you know, piling up. And I just want to stop or pause to say this is, I don't think that any small um, medium um, enterprise should be categorizing their risk. So someone says something bad and you say, oh, this is a small risk, this is a medium risk, this is, you should consider anything you see about your online reputation as the highest form of risk because it can snowball, you know, immediately. Um, and so, you know, due to bad publicity, you know, many of the designers left the forum and poor management working conditions, you know, it cost employees to quit. And I just want to pause there to say, who remembers the Nigerian brand? 
about tech companies a few months, many, many months, not like the last week, but many months ago. And I think one of the things that said to me is employees have a voice, and employees don't have a voice that ends, your employees have a voice. And your employees don't have a voice that ends in your suggestion box or your suggestion email. Media is democratized. So, um, you know, you also have to think about, and I always use the Sunday Times principle. What I'm doing to this customer, what I'm doing to this staff, if they publish it in Sunday Times on Sunday, how am I going to feel bad? You know, is this going to affect me? Is this going to affect you know, the brand. But long story short, instead of addressing the issues, the brand kept up a positive facade on social media. And, you know, that is, is and, and I remember just, I mean, I, I you know, I, I tend to look at what's happening on social media quite a bit. And, you know, I'll find people, I remember that the farming, it started off as a farming investment, something, something, and people kept crying. We're not getting the proceeds that you gave us. You told us that, they let this somewhere. You told us that. We're going to get X and X. We're not getting it. When you go to their page, they're talking about fun things, and that's what happened to these people. In fact, that family was about to be shut down now. Anyway, this factors combined with this large marketing spend led to the closure of Laurel and Wolf. So, what started out as one, an innovative model, not so many people are doing this, so we're doing this. At the time, imagine having this innovative idea in 2024, and where would you be? Let me go to the next slide, by 2023. So I think it's important for us to think about how we develop what I call a bulletproof online reputation management. The first thing we want to do is get your branding right. And I, 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 I know that there's no one here who believes that branding is, is the color or the forms. That's, that's what we suffer. In fact, I tell my colleagues, I'm like, marketing is such a low entry barrier um, industry. industry. So I'm passing motion and such a industry. In passing motion, you see, for your brand management, on yes. this post you know, on the wall. So, so I think is get your branding right. You know, the, the thing deliberately, you know, about your target audience. And I always say, think about what it is that you want them to think, to feel, and to do. This is my... Um, one of my strongest um, personal IP that I, I use often. As a brand, what do you want your customer, and you call it the TFT principle. What do you want them to think, what do you want them to feel, what do you want them to do? I don't think that any brand has been created to do nothing. You just want to be pretty, you know, and, and put yourself out there. And then what? What must they do? Um, so measure your online sentiments through um, research. And when I say measure, when I started, I talked about People thinking that measurement is one big deal. It's not. There's so many free um, and online measurement tools. I think mention analytics is free. A piece of hoopsuit, I think it's free. A piece of social sprout, I think it's also free. So go and check you know, what it is. I don't expect you know, that um, there's no piece you know, that an SME that wants to hear what people think or feel about him. Um, cannot use the free arm, um, you know, before you advance onto the pain piece. So do a SWOT analysis to so create your brand, and then stand out with a solid communication strategy. One of the things that people come to me to seek advice, you know, for their businesses, they'll say, yeah, you know, I know, but everyone is doing the same thing. I'm like, yeah, everyone is selling the same thing, but have you ever thought about bread? Have you really thought about how ordinary ordinary bread is, but there's some people who will grant bread on this side, there are people who will get on the queue. In fact, at some point, my children will say they wanted grand bread, and I'll be coming back from work, and I'll tell the driver, let's just stop him with my grand bread. Then I get there, I see the queue, I'm like, what's the problem? This is just bread. I have no time for this, I can't get on this queue. But the truth is, slowly and steadily, they built a brand, they found a different shape, so they know that people like sliced bread. They also know that people are so sentimental towards their geeky. You mesh them together, so now you have nice and cakey sliced bread. And the truth is, there's no idea that fell from the moon. Every idea you see is somebody building on something that somebody had said, somebody had thought of. And that's why you should not be afraid and get a standout communication strategy that allows you to connect to your customers. Nurture your online presence through content and social media marketing. This shouldn't have been standard when you fall through, you know, from this. Can we go to the next slide, please? 
And you know, just a bit on branding 101, because it's your brand that you are communicating. Um, your brand, your purpose, mission, and values, I'm not going to do it on this, but if, I think if you use the TFD principle, it will help you understand what it is that you are, are doing. I find your solutions and proposition and your products very um, very nice and very differentiating. Um, again, I'm sure this is what everyone wants to do. It's probably the first thing people do, which is your logo, colors, design. You know, and then think about your target audience, and that's what I'm going to leave with you in particular. Everyone can be your target audience. You've got a whole in. And it doesn't mean that you don't evolve your target audience. It can evolve, but you've got a whole in. Because if you have just limited marketing spend, you need to ensure that you're putting it so that you're hitting the bull's eye. Um, brand differentiation, what's your unique selling proposition? I just talked about the grand brand that used to make me queue for in those days until I got killed. Um, what's your brand personality? And the colors you choose also talk about your brand personality. You know, I used to think that I liked black. You know, literally all of my clothes, you know, would be black. And then I met Tosin, who's the chair lady of the Black <laughs> Association. Um, and, you know, it gives me joy to know that. And because I wear black a lot, I deliberately try to wear colors. Because if you leave me, all of my clothes, you know, will be black. And, you know, you've got to think about what black stands for. It stands for strength. And by the way, I used to like red. Um, and red is bold, red is confident, and then I move to black, which is strong, you know, and, and maybe, maybe actually it's age that maybe like, you know, black. But the point I'm making, just to pull this back, is that everything communicates. Everything communicates, even down to your choice of color. And, you know, what is your brand voice? You know, what is the tonality that you're using to speak? What is your brand voice? And I remember working on the Virgin Atlantic, not Virgin Nigeria, pure Virgin Atlantic um, brand. And their brand voice was bold. Their brand voice was cheeky, very cheeky. You know, when we were going into Botafogs, one of the things they said was, and, and you know, I thought it very rude, but you know, they were saying, is there any um, Virgin in Botafogs? What they meant was really, is there any new airline in Botafogs? Fresh has just come through. But there were so many innuendos. And, you know, it caused a bit of talkability at the time. You know, they say things that like, it's a first time for everyone. You never forget your first time. You know, what is your own brand voice? Don't say, oh, those, that other person also sells clothes. It doesn't really matter. Let's just get on after all. It's just clothes. It's, and I remember, I remember going to do, when I was doing my master's in the UK, and I used to go to a cinema near school. And obviously, I just arrived, so it's easy to go to a cinema. When you start doing the work and work is hard, you quickly drop your cinema adventure. So I dropped it. And I remember one day in my box thinking, you know, I got an email and it said, we've missed you so. This is me with a husband and two children. And I'm thinking, I'm always missed me. Then you go in and see that email. It was a cinema. Apparently, they had looked through their database, hadn't seen me in a while. So they were literally telling me, oh, we've missed you so. You know, I think I first smiled. And I thought, oh, wow, look at the cinema people. But I think the point to make is you can find your unique voice even in deep clutter. I've talked about your brand experience and I've talked about the total definition of a brand being when there's an alignment between your brand promise and your brand experience. There's no need to be pretty and all that. And when they experience you is rudeness. And you know, because I had a, a, the propensity, I mean, I told you guys I grew up in Pontacourt. I don't want anybody to think I was in trouble, some governor call my name, but I used to be very frontal. So because I used to be very frontal, I took a, an opposite side. So you cannot get me now, except at gunpoint, quarreling with anybody. You really can get me. So when I tried to shop with a vendor, I remember when I left, I'm sure she's still confused. I liked her, I bought something, it, it didn't work. I came into town, it didn't work. I fitted it, I sent my grandpa back. And she told my brother, I cannot refund it, brother. I said, just bring it. I mean, it to dash. Bring it, bring it. Keep it there, please. I can't be frustrated by, you know, one vendor. So, but obviously, that's it. She's not a customer because I'm never, ever, ever, ever going there. So, the point is, until there's an alignment between your brand promise and the brand experience, you don't have a reputation to deal with as yet. That's fine. Right. Thank you. Um, so your brand image is how do customers view your brand? Remember what I said was, let's go, we have a few slides, we need to fly through, because it's nothing that we... Um, I've talked about ways to measure your online um, sentiment. 
accept that you need to discover the buzz around your business on social media. And sometimes, as a, as a small and medium scale enterprise, you need to encourage people, which is, oh, did you say, somebody you sent a message and say, oh, this service was phenomenal. I'm like, hey, can you just help me write a review? Like, it's really critical. Just write a review. And that's how you, know, you begin to create a, a digital footprint. Search engine research analyze the top search results and what they're saying about you. So let's say you put in key search word um, um, fairly used clothes from the UK. It's important that you pop out. And by the way, I'm just giving you a trade secret. You can go and buy that search word you know, um, on Google. Um, I think you obviously, as you grow, you can commission research, you can do online surveys. I just want to say to interpreters that there's so many free tools. So many, so many, so many free tools. At least they allow you free at a basic level. Um, I've talked about the mention analytics, Hootsuit, Sprout Social. There's so many free tools, and as you want more, you then have to pay. Um, I think that it's important to also do competitive analysis to gain insights into your industry standards, you know? I mean, I know that the motivators tell us to compare ourselves with ourselves, which is great. Next slide, please. But it's important to compare yourself if you're in the market with your competitor. Let's not be confused here. We talked about um, strategizing on the SWOT, which is you understanding your strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities. And obviously, the outcome of this is building on your strengths. Building on your strengths. Let's go. And you know, the two questions that you need to ask yourselves, which is, what makes me different? What can I lean in amongst the things that makes me different? Um, look, I think communicating to standouts. I've given the example, you know, the cheeky messages that aligns with the brand personality, and it gets measurable communication goals. You know, communication is, it also evolves. So sometimes when you look at your work, what you need may be entry in, entry level communication, which is creating immediate awareness. You can't be creating immediate awareness forever. You must need um, maintenance, you know, sustainability, and then you graduate into sales, and then you revert back so the point is, you must let your communication evolve, and if you have a target, that would be great. Um, I mean, as an interpreter, a few people have, um, you know, the ability to get people to do um, a bit of social marketing for them. Sometimes you do it on your own. To be honest, I think it's so important as an interpreter that whatever it is that you're asking people to do for you, that you have a strong understanding of it, you know, before you eventually you know, also give it out to someone to handle. So have a fair understanding of it. And what 200 million people, some always have a niece or a nephew, a cousin or a brother who's willing to learn. You know, you can use summer intents if you can. Again, we talked about understanding your audience and tailoring your messages to their needs with the illustration of the cinema that I gave. And um, we talked about suitable channels and determining its frequency. I'll just dwell on this for a few minutes. One of the errors that I find um, that SMEs make is to go directly into tactics, which is before we say, Jack, oh, I have a Twitter handle, oh, I have an Instagram page, oh, I have that cannot be all. You must have a strategy because these are just channels. Twitter in itself is only a channel. You need a strategy that says, on Twitter, this is only a conversational platform. Therefore, I will only be, you know, perhaps just posting pictures or posting but on Instagram I will sell because they're visually driven and I will sell and show people who have won my apparel or whatever it is that you are selling. Remember I said that is what gets measured gets done. Can we go on to the next slide? So it's important that you measure yourself, you know, to see the progress that that you're making. And I've talked about, I mean, not deeply, but slightly, and this is really the tactics that I know everyone likes to jump on to, which is post engaging relevant content. I struggle with entrepreneurs because one minute you're selling um, corporate clothes, you know, that we need to, to, to wear to work, and the next minute you're lying on by your beach house, you know, in your bikini. I'm thinking, let's not be confused. You know, let's sell if we're selling. You know, find or you can if you can afford it. You know, have two separate handles where you are selling and pitching relevant content. We've talked about using existing tools, resolving issues promptly and respectfully. Stay consistent, guys. Consistency has, you know, um, I mean, consistency shows dependability. 
and focus on building a community. We talked about asking those people, can you give me a review? Can you speak for me? Sometimes you're not going to tell your friendly customers to be the ones that respond. Um, because I know that there's a lot of authentication when somebody is responding on your behalf. And then share testimonials. Can we please put a bit of thoughts, next slide, on the testimonials? Can we not make it, you know, obviously a testimonial? Because that's what we see, you know, the marketplace. Somebody can be a bit creative as well with the testimonials that they give. I'm going to leave this presentation because I don't like to talk and not give people and my audience to speak, but I've talked about optimizing, optimizing search for your pardon, and then I spoke to you about um, search word, Google search word purchases, especially for um, you know, the unique selling products that you have. But I'm going to leave this slide. But the highest thing I want you to know is that you can create a Google business profile. Um, I, I, and I think away from that is just to say that there's so many free, the next slide, so many powerful and free tools. Even Five minutes, okay, that's all. Okay, all right, let's go, next slide. So, so I think we're going to stop here. This is a KLT factor. I talk about it as no like and trust. People do businesses with whom they like, and with whom they know, like, and trust. The KLT principle. Success in business is more than just a popularity con contest. Sometimes I wish I want to calm people down to say, keep this social media thing down. You're not trying to gain popularity, you're trying to sell a product about getting people to understand that we give you your brand enough to patronize and support you. I'm going to leave this slide. Actually, I think I'm going to pause now. Next slide. Um, and then ask anyone to ask questions um, or give their views or their thoughts um, behind. And the last thing I just want to mention, I know that I said the last prior, is about putting your face to your name. And um, when I moved over, my husband likes it when I say when I moved to Lagos, because he kind of envisions me coming in a night box with my things struggling from what I thought. It's not true, I live a normal life, so don't mind us I think we came with one night box. But anyway, when I moved over from Sakot to Lagos, one of the things I found, um, you know, quite shocking was the dominance of females, you know, in the market, and then their presence, you know, in the market. So where I came from, even though the males were dominant, you didn't always find them, you know, in the in the office or in the store, as we we'll call it. So what it then did for me, you know, I go because I was a marketer and I do consumer behavior and listening. People will come to buy and they will say, "Where is your madam?" I'm thinking, "But the goods are here. You can see it. It's standing here. Why are you looking for the madam?" But it says to me that apparently on this side of town, you have to put a face to your name. So I think wherever you're selling from occasionally as the owner of the business, you've got to come, you know, to brand and put a face, you know, to your business. So just consistent brand messaging and you should learn to give back like 83 resources. Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, I will leave this presentation with you and I'll stop here at this time. Thank you so much for listening. So I'll leave it anyway. So are there any questions, thoughts, views? Yes. 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 Yes
have an angry customer. Mm. You see them that you're trying to get in and you can talk to mm. uh, you're trying all your best, you're mm -hmm. trying to be refined. Mm. Those customers are saying, no, mm. I'm angry, I don't want mm. those strawberry kids. Mm. What, what do you do? So, so I think Whilst I say that we should be amenable to the customers, as long as any customer would be costly, especially when you think you are being in the right. Um, and I think that once you start communicating with the customer, you have to use a Sunday Times principle, which is you need to feel like everything you're saying is going to be in Sunday Times on Sunday morning. Like your, your, your undergarments is going to be shown on the newspaper. So you start documenting, and what you also need to do is when you now start seeing that the customer is you know, going around giving you bad reviews, it allows you counter comments. When the customer says you put down, when the customer says you put down, for whilst you can, what does that do for you? You know, I was talking to somebody about it um, last week, and I was telling her that because media is so democratized, when somebody Googles ATP resources slaps a customer, you will never be there to speak for you. But when they see a counter claim by ATP resources, they will then read that because there was a counter, then they will now go, you know, it's not in the court of public opinion to make a judgment and a decision. Obviously, you don't want to let it escalate, but if it escalates and gets into um, the course of law, I hope you're doing your business, I'm not trying to get to the course of law, but if you know, escalate into those, then you keep standing and be consistent. The thing about the truth is, even if you tell it 60 times, it's still the right thing you're saying, the consistent truth you're telling. And, and remember I said in one of those slides that you always recover, it's not the end of it. It's, it's, it's bad or can be bad, but you can recover by putting the right strategy. Any further comments, Dr. Bill? I think we have six or seven minutes to wrap up this session. Okay. So it's actually fantastic. Then we need to wrap up. Yes, I then, you know, I'm going to let you get the food and then we'll see what happens. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so, so much. Honestly, I when I thought about the kind of facilitators that we wanted for this boot camp, Ikiru was one of the first people that came to mind. I went like all the actions, I was like, Ikiru, I know you're in South Africa. Even if you have to join us online, you just have to be a part of this. And she said to me, Tosin, I'm in Lagos. Fantastic. <laughs> so it is so it's such a pleasure to have you today. I think if we're talking about um, marketing expertise, She's one of the best people that can take you through marketing, communications, and branding. If you see what she's trying to do, she's basically compressed, like, I don't know, a decade of marketing into 10 slides. Sorry, we will give you this for free. You're going to have to pay her to get her to teach you core marketing. But what I think you should take away today are the tips and tricks. And she did give a few of them. I'll just quickly run through one or two that I took. I was trying to do too many things, but I have a few. What a mouth. We cannot say this enough. When it, especially when it comes to SMEs, people tend to think, and I say it all the time in Kerry when I'm in public, people tend to think they need me or you. In this day and age that digitalization has taken over the world, why don't you find a way to learn and deploy what you've learned by yourself without having to spend as much money? You don't have the same money that the corporates have. So you can actually take charge and you know, take hold of your brand. And from there, you make sure you put service measures in place such that when you do have concerns from your um, clients, they can reach out to you and get solutions. She's just talked about all of that on all this, right? What about is so important. Even, I mean, we're just coming, I think we're just moving out from SME category to institutionalizing. But honestly, in the first, second, third year of the business, that's all I did. What about, we're still doing it in you know, so don't leave your info email on mine. When she said that, I was like, that is a very solid thing. You know? Everything communicates. Even I am going to steal that line. Everything communicates. Your voice, your persona, the places you go, the people you talk to. I tell my friends sometimes, I'm like, ah, there's sometimes that some people will do some things. I start to read about really friendship. You see, I step aside. You know why? Because even that can rub off on you. So we really need to be careful about everything that we do. You are a brand. You know? What to do when to, uh, to remedy a situation. I think she already spoke at length of that, and I will not speak too much more about that. But to say a profuse thank you to Giro. Honestly, you guys can't understand. If 
people like her said, no, we'll be here to pay. So thank you, thank you. Totally appreciate you. And in our spirit, we just have a small gift that we would like to present to you just to say thank you.